Hey everyone, welcome back to another Harkla YouTube video. We're excited to have you here today. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. We are the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. Today we're gonna to talk about sensory over-responsivity and five strategies for a sensory avoider. I know you do. <laughs> In the past, we have done a video on sensory seeking and what that is, but today we thought it would be important to talk about the flip side, and that is sensory avoiding. Just know that there are a variety of terms that we're going to throw out there. We've got over responder, sensory avoider, overstimulated, hypersensitive, there's a lot of a lot of terms, um, but they all mean the same thing, so don't yes. worry. <laughs> yes. So a sensory avoider is somebody who struggles to process sensory input and it causes an overreaction. They're over responsive to sensory input. These individuals are often in that state of fight or flight. My favorite example is if you have like a, a hair that's tickling you, um, you know, our, our tactile system is designed to keep us safe. So like if there's a bug crawling on you, you can know like, oh, brush it off. But if your clothes are constantly giving you that sensation, that tickly sensation, like there's a bug crawling on you, you're gonna be uncomfortable and in that fight or flight state. Like, am I in danger? Is there something on me? Did someone just brush past me? And so that's why it's really important to address this challenge, this sensory modulation challenge, because being in fight or flight is really difficult and it's hard on your internal system to be in this chronic state. So that's why we're here today. Another example would be a child who is fearful of playground equipment, right? They don't like to get on the swing. They don't like to climb really high. So they just completely avoid it. They don't like to go to the park because they don't like to go on the equipment. They're actually struggling with some vestibular, proprioceptive, and probably visual input. And they're over responsive to those different sensory inputs. So this can manifest in a variety of different ways from tactile problems processing to being able to play on the playground. It can manifest like picky eating if the child is a chronic picky eater. Could be some oral motor over responsivity. There's a lot of different ways. Could be some auditory sensitivity. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that, that later. Big. But yes, so really important to dive into why it's important to identify the sensory concerns and as well as how to help if this is what you are noticing about either yourself or your child. If it's negatively impacting your ability to get through your day, that's when you should be concerned. If it's preventing you from doing something that you want to do or something you have to do. So if you are unable to tolerate the loud noises of cars going by and honking and sirens and it causes you to not even want to go outside, right? Mm -hmm. Then that could be a problem. A quick disclaimer though, if you are noticing severe challenges with those daily life skills, if you're noticing that you have to modify your child's routine in order to avoid a sensory meltdown every single day with every single thing that you do, we would recommend looking into in-person occupational therapy services, get an evaluation and just make sure that you have an in-person team supporting you. Let's dive into our five strategies or activities. If you do have a sensory avoider or if you yourself are finding that you are a sensory avoider, you're having over-responsive reactions to sensory input. Number one, and this applies to anyone of any age, proprioception. This is one of your hidden senses. And when we talk about proprioception for this, specifically we mean deep touch pressure. So deep touch pressure is very calming to the nervous system. There is research behind showing that it is helpful if you're in a state of fight or flight. It helps calm your body and your brain back down. We'll link the research so you can check it out. But what do we say? When in doubt, probe, probe it out. out. Yep. <laughs> it's the okay. all calming sense. Yes. So a couple of functional things that you can do to provide either yourself or your child with proprioception, chewing gum, because you do have receptors in your jaw that need that proprioceptive input, especially with 
people who grind their teeth, that can be something to look into. Chewing gum is really helpful. Weighted blankets, weighted lap pads, compression clothing, compression sheets to sleep in at night are a couple of things. Even body socks, those stretchy body socks are really helpful too. Totally. Anything that gives you that feedback to your mm -hmm. muscles is proprioception and can be calming. Mm -hmm. Going along with that, leaning against the wall. This is a little trick that is sounds so simple, but is so effective. You did it the other day. I did, yeah. You just leaned against the wall. And it's cool because it takes away the visual field from behind you. So your body almost relaxes because it doesn't have to be on the alert for any sensory input to process, like visual input or vestibular or proprioceptive input from around you. It's just taking away that field. I just have to recognize what's going on in front of me. And I was like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> Another one would be chair push-ups, wall push-ups, animal walks. Again, anything that's working those muscles and providing that feedback, you're getting heavy work, which is a form of proprioception. We do have a lot of content, either YouTube videos, podcasts, on the proprioceptive sense in and of itself. So definitely check that out. We'll link it in the description for you. What you can do is include these proprioceptive deep pressure activities before you or your child feels that sensory overload. So if you know going to the public pool causes your child to have an overreaction or sensory overload, they actually tend to avoid it. Maybe they don't like it, even though they like swimming so much. Complete these proprioceptive activities before you go. Use some of the proprioceptive strategies while you're there, and then definitely do some deep pressure activities mm -hmm. afterwards. The next strategy is to incorporate obstacle courses into your daily routine. Now, we are big fans of obstacle courses. We do have another YouTube video on how to create obstacle courses. Definitely check that out. But we're not talking about like American Ninja Warrior type obstacle courses. If you want to go that route, totally oh, fine. Good luck. But things like crawling through tunnels, jumping and crashing, crossing bean bags. Think about all of the multiple senses that you're addressing when you are doing obstacle courses with your child, your head is getting into different positions. You have to visually identify different obstacles and if you incorporate puzzles or different uh, visual motor activities, you're working on your visual sense, your auditory sense, if you have a metronome working on in the background and you have to process that auditory input, Obstacle horses are just great for sensory avoiders, but just great activities in general to incorporate. Number three is sensory bins. We have an entire YouTube video dedicated to sensory bins because we love them so much. But this is really great if you have a tactile avoider. If you have a child or you yourself uh, don't like to get your hands messy, don't like to touch certain things, maybe overstimulated by certain clothing textures or tags or seams, just tactile input is overwhelming, mm -hmm. then getting into sensory bins is a great opportunity to practice and help teach your body how to modulate that tactile input. You can use a variety of different tactile mediums. There's dry tactile mediums like rice or beans. You can use wet tactile mediums like shaving cream or even water and complete a functional activity with it. Hide different items in the sensory bin like coins or marbles. Find them, take them out of the sensory bin, sort them into containers, stack them into a tower, match them, whatever, whatever you come up with. The next strategy is to use therapeutic music programs. Now these are a little bit more on the expensive side. These aren't things that you can just go buy from the grocery store and pick up and incorporate. These unfortunately. Are, <laughs> unfortunately. These are tools that really work on the brain from the inside out. They help to get the brain out of that state or fight or flight. It's like a workout for the brain. A couple of programs that we have used in the past and currently do, Advanced Brain Technologies has the listening program. Um, integrated listening has the safe and sound program. Uh, therapeutic listening is another tool. Um, but I've used the first two definitely with myself and can attest to those. I've used therapeutic listening with clients in the past. So definitely some things to look into. We'll link the information in the description. Um, but really, really helpful tools to work from the inside out. Yeah, specifically for kiddos who are over-responsive to auditory input, mm -hmm. but even kiddos who are over-responsive to tactile input or vestibular input because it's all connected. So if you're going to work on one sense, you're also helping the other senses. Mm -hmm. 
Another tool here, especially one that I love, is noise canceling headphones. You can either use noise blocking headphones or if you really want to splurge, you can find some that actually cancel the noise out. Um, a great strategy, especially for at the end of the day, um, going to loud events like basketball games or arenas or um, gymnasiums where there's a lot of echoing, having those in your sensory kit on the go can be really beneficial. Our last strategy is sensory stories. These are kind of like social stories, which we've talked about in the past, uh, but more from a sensory perspective. And the first way that you can do this is to look into buying a book, a children's book that talks about the sensory system. And mm -hmm. we have a couple of them that we really love that we've used with our kiddos. We'll link them in the description because they're super fun and engaging and just teaches your kiddos about the sensory system, about how everyone has a unique sensory system and we all react to sensory input differently and we all use different strategies. So it's a great way to just talk about sensory with them. A sensory story compared to a social story is similar, but instead of talking about what we're going to do in the situation like a social story does, we are going to identify maybe a sensory need. So let's say someone is standing in line and they continually bump into them. They bump into their peers. They constantly are touching them and we're going to work through that situation from a sensory standpoint. So we're going to make a little story. We're going to practice what strategies we're going to use. We're going to maybe have like a, a tactile compression belt and we're going to put our hands into our little belt that's around our clothes and it's going to give us that input that we need. Um, and we're going to practice that over and over and over again until we recognize the sensory need and in the social component. So hence a, a sensory story. So just something to have in your toolkit to incorporate into either your therapy sessions if you're a therapist or at home um, if you're working on strategies for your own child. Hopefully some of these ideas were helpful, gave you some new ideas to try. Try one thing at a time, be consistent with whatever you're trying with yourself or your child and see if it works. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure that you follow us on the gram at Harkla underscore family, as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast. We love hearing your, just your success stories there. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. If you liked this video and found it helpful, make sure you like it. Make sure you leave us a comment, subscribe to the channel, mm -hmm. share this video with a friend who you think could also benefit from it. Yep. And without further ado, we will see you next week. Did I say that right? Yeah. Over responsive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then that could be a problem. Yeah. Could be a problem. <laughs> <laughs>